and welcome to another Conversations with Dr. Westman, proudly brought to you by Adapt Your Life Academy. And today we're going to be chatting about saturated fat and cholesterol. It's been thought that eating saturated fat increases your cholesterol, which in turn clogs your arteries, and this is simply not true. Let's learn all there is to know in today's episode. We also have a special bonus for you, brought to you by Dr. Westman, and it is his new guide, Eight Ways a Keto Diet Improves Heart Health. I'll tell you a little bit more about this at the end of today's episode, and we will also put a link for you in the description. So let's get started. Right, uh, let's get right to today's questions. How did we come to believe that saturated fat was the root cause of increasing our cholesterol, and more specifically, our LDL cholesterol? Yeah, well, it's an interesting story that all started with feeding rabbits cholesterol. There, there, yeah, there was a, uh, some researchers who thought through very carefully how to uh, evaluate food and, 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 and rabbits develop a kind of a lesion or a spot on the arteries, kind of like humans do, that looks like atherosclerosis. So it actually started by feeding cholesterol in rabbit chow to rabbits. And then they developed this sort of thing that looked like a human arterial plaque or, or atherosclerosis or the, the problem that we get uh, that we don't want that leads to heart attacks and strokes. So that starting with the rabbits um, then led to some science where the science was sort of best to say weak science. It's something called epidemiology, where you try to examine different uh, factors that people tell you they're doing and relate it to different diseases. And um, suffice it to say that the studies that were done were sort of done to prove what they already thought they knew to be true from the rabbit paper. <laughs> so uh, there's something called the seven countries study and the, uh, the physician, uh, excuse me, PhD researcher, uh, Ansel Keys did the study, published it and then talked about it over and over and over. And so it really kind of, the whole idea that saturated fat in the food led to elevated cholesterol and cholesterol leading to the arterial damage um, was not soundly rooted in what we call experimental evidence or, or in the medical world, we call those randomized controlled trials where you control one factor or, or very few factors and get to test whether that factor is important for causing the disease. It came from this other, uh, what we call hypothesis generating research, meaning you can generate questions, but it doesn't prove or disprove anything because it's not experimental science. And yeah, so weak, weak science, basically, you know, sandy ground was the, the saturated fat theory uh, causing heart disease. Now, um, so much so, uh, you know, that what you're mentioning, um, it's in fact that the American nutritional guidelines have now changed their view on saturated fat in our diet. Tell us a little bit more about that. Right. Well, uh, now, you know, in 2020, 2021, uh, after years, literally decades of recommendations saying restrict saturated fat, restrict saturated fat, the guidelines now have they've kind of quietly removed that restriction on dietary fat and, and dietary cholesterol. While the researchers have known this for a while worldwide, the, the guideline panels and the experts that, you know, have been very um, resistant to changing that message. And, but that's right. So you look in modern day recommendations and there is no restriction on saturated fat and dietary cholesterol, dietary saturated fat by organizations that don't have some sort of agenda to push. So there are, you're going to find some organizations that still have that there, but these were organizations that were basically created on that belief. So it would be like, you know, having a, a religious group say that there was no God. 
when it was, the religion's based on a belief in God. <laughs> so organizations that were started because of a belief that saturated fat was bad aren't going to change their recommendations. So now that we know that saturated fat doesn't in fact clog your arteries, what are some of the benefits of saturated fat? Well, you know, I kind of, you know, the term smell to rat, meaning I, 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 thought there were some things that didn't make sense to me in my training. You know, one is that cholesterol is found in every cell in our bodies. It's necessary for the membranes and, and normal function um, and, and for hormonal function to, to restrict cholesterol never made sense to me. In fact, if you restrict cholesterol in the food, you make more of it in your liver. Your liver makes more cholesterol if you restrict it. How, you know, how good cholesterol we bet. Similarly, with saturated fat, we make saturated fat in our livers from carbohydrates to store the energy in our own body. So we use saturated fats as a storage mechanism for fuel. How, how could it be bad for you? So, you know, when you really look at the biology and the way our bodies work, it makes no sense to target these, these um suspects, if you will, and especially now knowing that the science that it was founded on was weak and, and it has not been borne out in larger trials th through the years. So when, when finally randomized trials were done, looking at low fat diets that lower the, the saturated fat and the cholesterol, they didn't do anything. They didn't reduce heart disease. They didn't reduce stroke. They didn't reduce cancer. So uh, it, finally, when that theory was tested, it didn't hold up. So talking about the cholesterol and saturated fat, we, you know, it is possible that if you increase your saturated fat, that your LDL cholesterol may go up. up. Um, but help us understand because that um, in conjunction with the low carb or keto diet promotes bigger particle size um, LDL versus the smaller dense particle size. Why is that important? Yeah, well, it's um, now, now you know the saturated fat and cholesterol in the food is fine. The traditional teaching is that these lipoprotein particles that transport cholesterol in the blood are the bad guys. So it's, it's almost like, uh, okay, well, we were wrong about that. So now we're, we're on to this hypothesis or, or theory. And if you develop drugs that lower the LDL cholesterol particle, you can reduce the recurring heart attacks and recurrent strokes a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit. So, so medicines that, uh, that do this change in the LDL can have some benefit, but now that you get into the size of the particles, the large LDL particles actually are thought not to be the ones that cause the damage. It's the small LDL particles. And of course the medicines that reduce LDL reduce them across the board. Uh, a keto diet changes the small particles into the large particles for just about everyone, so even if the LDL number goes up, which causes quite a bunch of confusion, even among my colleagues and my doctor friends who uh, think that all, all L, large LDL is thought not to be bad. It's the small one. And what kind of ties it all together is this inf inflammation metabolic syndrome and the drugs that lower LDL actually lower the inflammation as well. So it may be that all of this is working on the same team, so to speak, by lowering inflammation, meaning the keto diets and the drugs that lower LDL and lower inflammation actually are lowering that metabolic syndrome risk for heart disease. That's all we have time for today. Be sure to watch us next week. We're going to be talking about how to test your cholesterol. But before you leave, remember that we have a special bonus for you today, and it is eight ways a keto diet improves heart health, brought to you by Dr. Westman. And if you're worried about cardiovascular risk, this guide is definitely for you. Uh, we also have a brand new online course coming up called End Your Cholesterol Confusion with Dr. Westman. This course is going to be amazing and it'll empower you to understand everything there is to know about cholesterol, risk factors, reading lipid panels, how to discuss uh, this topic with your doctor and so much more. There'll be a button in the description if you want to join the waitlist. 
If you would like to learn more about any of our other upcoming courses, you can visit us at adaptyourlifeacademy.com. Eric, thank you so much for your time, and we look forward to catching up with you again next week. Thank you. Take care.